What's going on guys? This is Saturday Afternoon Wrestling. My name is Dustin and it is a great day to talk about wrestling because this weekend AEW caps off an insane last few weeks with All Out coming live from Chicago just two weeks removed from All In at Wembley Stadium. Now normally I record like a little recap of everything that happened in the week before getting to predictions and show previews but this is the second time I'm recording this. I had issues with the first recording where I, you know, flawless predictions, unbelievable insights into the week, everything people have come to come to know and expect, of course, uh, gone. So I spent multiple hours tonight moving two refrigerators, one in and one out of my house. I didn't really feel like recording everything again. So here is the preview and predictions for All Out. We are getting straight to it. One of AEW's biggest shows on the calendar. I'm surprised still that they're running it so close to All In, but I have to say compared to last year where they were, you know, a little bit more thrown together, obviously they had a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes as well, all sorts of drama and controversy from All In to All Out and everything over that week. So I'm happy to say that this feels so much more cohesive from top to bottom. They had two weeks between All Out and All In, and they've really maximized that time between Dynamite and Rampage and Collision. Uh, so I'm, I'm very impressed with how much more cohesive everything has been in terms of storytelling here. So I'm sure this is going to be a great card. We've got 10 matches on the card. And like I have said before, AEW is a company that you know you are getting good wrestling. When you buy the pay-per-view, you know you are going to get your money's worth at least. You may not like all the decisions, you may not like all the storylines, but you know you are going to get your money's worth when it comes to in-ring action and number of matches. So here we go, Wikipedia order. We have two pre-show matches, aka zero-hour matches. First one is the Undisputed Kingdom taking on the Beast Mortos and Shane Taylor Promotions taking on Action Andretti and Top Flight. It's a three-way trios match. Um, it's the perfect type of match to open the show, too. Like, if this is the first match on the card, it's a great way to start off with a super high-energy and impressive combination of performers. I think the Beast Mortos in something like this is a great use for him obviously it would have been cool to see him later on in the uh, continental championship match but we can't get him there this is a great spot because he's going to be the big muscle that can toss around all of these high flyers and it's going to create for some great spots and sequences i'm sure and these are are you know three well-established teams in particular obviously undisputed kingdom and andretti and top flight i don't know why they're not all just top flight uh, because they've got them coming out doing the full flight attendant gimmick now with them and Leo Rush and Leigh McGray. So I don't know why it's not just Top Flight as the name of the faction, but that's nitpicking. Here, though, looking at this, I kind of feel like this has to be an Undisputed Kingdom win. And if they don't win, like, I don't know what happened. Like, I don't think they split because they're all so closely associated. Like, I don't think Taven and Bennett like strike out on their own unless they're going back to more exclusively appearing on ring of honor but like this group has not done anything we don't know where wardlow is adam cole is apparently not anywhere close to recovering and returning and so this whole group has just been kind of left like rudderless and directionless and it's a shame because there's so much talent involved and there's so much potential when you think about how white hot the adam cole mjf story was before he got hurt and before the devil reveal kind of just undid everything like it, it's such a shame because it, it really had the makings of something special and you know through no fault of their own through injuries and unfortunate circumstances we're going to be deprived of that and that's a bummer i, I feel bad for all of those performers so i'm going to say the undisputed kingdom win this because i i really they need it <laughs> like they need something they need some type of direction and some type of story that they can latch onto. And Top Flight can take the loss, and Shane Taylor Promotions and Beast Mortos, kind of, I hate to say it, but like live to be in this spot <laughs> to take the loss for the uh, the more established team. So 
I'm going to say Undisputed Kingdom gets the win and potentially a future trios titles opportunity. So the other pre-show match is I'm kind of surprised it's on the pre-show. It's the Cage of Agony, Brian Cage, Bishop Khan, and Toa Leona taking on Bang Bang Gang, Juice Robinson, Austin Gunn, and Colton Gunn. Now, obviously when it comes to the Bang Bang Gang, kind of just waiting on Jay White to be cleared and to come back. Uh, but I don't really want him right back into a trio story. Like if he came back and was the single star while the other guys did all the trio stuff, I can very easily get behind that. So I'm going to say this is where Jay White makes his triumphant return because in my heart of hearts, before Brian Danielson retires, I would like to see Brian Danielson, Jay White one-on-one -on -one for the AEW title. So I'm going to say Jay White returns here, costs the Cage of Agony the victory, helps the Bang Bang Gang win, and we go off on another direction with Jay White and rebuilding him back to be that main event title contention superstar that I believe he can be. Hopefully he is healthy and that happens because that, that type of match just sounds wonderful. And obviously the Bang Bang Gang can kind of do no wrong. They're at this weird point where they're, they're just in such a groove. They gel so well together. Their in-ring performances are great. Juice Robinson being back is, is a gigantic boost as well. Even with JY out, out, it's just so nice to have Juice Robinson back in the fold too. So I'm going to say Bang Bang Gang and we kick off the show uh, apparently here with Will Ospreay versus Pac for the AEW International Championship. They have had one match before this that was a 30 minute time limit draw. And the build to this has been awesome for only being a few weeks because the story has been Osprey wanting to help out others, Osprey wanting to challenge Ricochet, and instead Pac keeps popping up like, hey, don't forget about me. Don't forget about me. And that's, that's kind of intriguing because I, I don't think Will Ospreay would drop the title two weeks after winning it because I don't think they're going to go Will Ospreay into Brian Danielson like as the next match for Brian Danielson potentially. Like, because I, I think that, you know, when the time comes, Ospreay might be the one to beat Danielson. I, I really don't know, though. That's, that's far, far in advance, hopefully. Hopefully we have a nice championship reign for, for Brian here. But I, I do like the story, though, of Pac saying, don't underestimate me. Stop taking me lightly. Like, it feels weird to have that be the story, and then he loses anyways. But I think that's what's going to happen. I'm going to say Will Ospreay successfully retains. I think if they put this match first, it is smart as a way to fire up the crowd, and it is awful for the pressure it will put on everyone else. Because I think those guys, in the brief moments we've seen them together in this build, this short build, uh, it's pretty clear that they're going to be uh, an electric combination. And then next, we have got the tag team match for the AEW World Title Tag Titles. Just announced this last week, the Young Bucks defending against Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler Yuta of the Blackpool Combat Club. Um, I kind of feel like this is a way just to keep everything involved and cohesive in the storytelling since the, the Brian Danielson match is against Jack Perry. So I don't think this is going to evolve into a longer feud. And the Blackpool Combat Club are also the trios champions already. So I think this is probably going to be a... Black uh, Young Bucks win, uh, the Young Bucks retain, and this is just a nice one-off big pay-per-view match that gets a lot of like popular, well-established wrestlers on the card. Plus, we know that with these four guys, it's going to be a great match, kind of no matter what happens, but I think this is a, a Young Bucks retain and Blackpool Combat Club kind of go off into whatever is going on with John Moxley maybe is their next storyline, but I don't think they lose anything in in loss in losing this and a loss here i was trying to say i don't think they lose anything in the event of losing here because they are the trios champions with Pac. they are one of the most popular groups on the roster they're all kind of like at this point a little bulletproof in terms of like they can take a loss and come back and keep going and it, it's not going to be a problem so i think this is a young bucks retention and a, probably a really good match on top of that Next, we have a match that I think people have probably been waiting for for a long time. It is Willow Nightingale versus Chris Statlander with Stokely Hathaway. I almost read just Willow Nightingale versus Stokely Hathaway uh, in a Chicago street fight. Now, these guys are 
insane when it comes to these street fights and hardcore matches. Willow Nightingale is kind of like, that's like her signature match is the Chicago street fight. I really doubt they will hold anything back against each other. I see Stokely Hathaway getting involved and probably getting thrown through a table. And honestly, I, I don't really know, because I don't know if this is for the CMLL women's title or not. It's not listed as being a part of it. So I don't know if this is just a grudge match and they're going to just determine who's who's better and who wins this feud. But if for some reason it is, and that's not listed here on Wikipedia, that does kind of change my answer. I think if that happens, I'm going to say Willow Nightingale retains. And if it is not for the title, if this is just a grudge match blow off street fight, I think Chris Statlander wins because I think she needs the win here, like a definitive big win in what could be perceived as Willow's signature match. Like, I, I think that would go a long way towards really cementing this heel turn. Um, unless it's meant to just be a shorter thing. But I think Chris Statlander gets the definitive win here, and hopefully both of them go on to bigger and better things because I think this match will be like, okay, they can't top it. They just tore the house down with, with this. I, I do truly have high high expectations for this match. I think it's going to be awesome with these guys involved and just how willing to go absolutely balls to the wall they are. They both are in these types of matches. So I, I think that's a, a complete recipe for success with all of these factors, all of these performers and the stipulation. I, I really can't wait to see this one. The next we have got the fatal four way for the AEW continental championship. Kazuchika Okada, the champion defending against Mark Briscoe, Orange Cassidy and Kanosuke Takeshka. Obviously, I think the money matchup here is Okada versus Takeshka. I think everyone is ready to see that. It has been electric the couple times. They've kind of even just stared each other down. Um, Orange Cassidy, Mark Briscoe, you know what you're getting. Mark Briscoe, uh, the Ring of Honor champion. I don't know when the last time he defended the Ring of Honor title was, but he is a, a mainstay of the AEW roster now. And you know what you're getting with him. You know, he, he I should say you kind of know what you're getting because he's, he's completely unpredictable. Orange Cassidy, one of the best wrestlers on the roster. It's, it's great to see him get this spot here on the card too. I was kind of surprised heading into this weekend that they would uh, not have him on such a big show. But it makes sense to have him here in a match like this because he, he vibes so well with basically anyone he's in the ring with. He's like that perfect complimentary performer. Uh, but like I said, I think the money here is Takeshka Okada. Um, I could see this being Takeshka pins someone else and steals the title and sets up a one-on-one -on -one where Okada hasn't been pinned. Um, and then they have a, a match for the title that way. Or I could see Okada wins and there's like a bit of hints at him and Takeshka. And then Takeshka emerges after this as the next number one contender. And we get a bit of a longer, more substantial feud. But either way... I think that is the end game. I'm going to say Okada retains. Actually, no, I'm going to say the other. I'm going to say Takeshka wins by pinning Mark Briscoe. And and Okada immediately calls him out and is like, hey, we, we got to get back to it. Like, no, nah, we're running this back. And it will be great. Whatever happens on Saturday with these guys is going to be awesome. Whatever happens in the following weeks with these guys is going to be awesome. I just need like a three four or five match series between them because I think they're going to be incredible in the ring. Next, we have the AEW TBS Championship with Camille banned from ringside. It is Mercedes Monet defending against Hikaru Shida uh, in a match that is probably here to help everyone forget the all-in match with Britt Baker, who has just not been seen. <laughs> like, I'm kind of surprised she's just not been seen since all-in. I don't know if she was like actually not done with her suspension, but they just said she was so that she could come back and like do the match. And then she's just gone again. Uh, but it's really interesting. They have not mentioned that match. They've not mentioned her. They have not mentioned anything about it. So it might just be a one and done, unfortunately. But this match feels like, okay, this is a match for everyone to see what Mercedes Monet is all about if they were left disappointed with the all-in match with Britt Baker. So I, I really have high hopes here. I think the Camille ban from ringside means Camille is interfering in this match or another person is joining the CEO's stable. That's always a good a good workaround for that as well if they have someone surprised ready to join in. Uh, but I think this is a Mercedes Monet win, but I, I do think this is probably a great match 
that really resets uh, this rain for Mercedes. It kind of uh, course corrects after that underwhelming all-in match. Um, and and really, Sheeta is one of those performers I think you could put in the ring with basically anybody, and you know you're going to get a good, compelling match. And it's nice to see her get this spot in a singles match and not have it be like a, a four-way match or, or a ladder match or any stipulation. Like, it's nice to see her just get this big spot in a singles one-on-one -on -one match where she can just go deep into her bag and, like, pull out every trick in the book. And next, we have got the singles match between MJF and Daniel Garcia. Uh, this one has ramped up very quickly to be, like, a blood feud. I'm a little, little torn here, though, because... My heart would say Daniel Garcia wins this because he's been in this type of situation before where it's he gets the he gets the the babyface booking and he loses and loses and loses and wins and then goes to the next feud and loses and loses and wins um and it, it feels like we're here where if he gets this win on MJF then okay we're 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 stepping onto the Daniel Garcia roller coaster and and we're not stopping this time like the the push is a full go but his contract status being so murky with no reports really on if he's re-signed or not. All of the things are, are, are that I'm reading are saying that WWE is pretty sure he's re-signing with AEW. And that kind of seems to be um, just the, the general consensus. But I, if he loses here, I don't know. I, I think it brings that into question a bit more because obviously they're not going to have him pin one of their top, if not their top guy, and then just be like, all right, see you guys. Like, <laughs> this has been fun. Um, it's like the same thing as like when Stephanie Vacur had the unbelievable match with Mercedes Monet. And then like the next week she was like, yeah, I'm going to WWE. Like, thank you for the exposure, like the added exposure, Sia. Um, and I, I just, I can't see them doing that here, even if Garcia is one of their, you know, homegrown type of talents. So I think Daniel Garcia wins this. I think he stays with AEW. But I think him and MJF have an absolutely brutal, like, 15-minute, stiff-as-hell match where one or both of them are bleeding. He, MJF hit Garcia with a bottle this week in the buildup on Dynamite, which was crazy. Like, it, like, made, like, an audible thud. And then you just saw the blood pouring out of the top of his fort. Like, it was crazy. It, it, was, it was a crazy moment. Um... So I, I really don't know. These guys are going to have unbelievable chemistry, I think, in the ring, though. I think MJF's showy style is going to blend really well with Garcia's, like, technical ability and just how smooth he is in the ring. So I think this will be highly entertaining as well. But I do think it's going to be a Daniel Garcia victory, hopefully propelling him towards bigger and better things. Maybe that match running it back with Will Ospreay uh, or whatever other direction they want to take him. I just want to see him continue to get uh, more and more to do in a bigger and bigger spotlight because I, I think he is more than proved he is ready for it and is more than proved that he deserves it. Then we have the AEW world title match. It is Brian Danielson defending against Jack Perry. Uh, again, there's been a lot of uh, talk about Jack Perry being the first choice for a feud with Danielson, and I, I understand, but... The logic being that he just pinned, he's the last person to pin Danielson in the the Anarchy in the Arena match, I think it was. He beat the other number one contender uh, that night, Darby Allen, who has a future shot. So, like, the logic checks out. Like, it, it's basic, but it checks out. So, I think it's a smart move. I think Jack Perry walking into Chicago here, the one-year anniversary of Punk getting fired for uh, lightly choking Jack Perry backstage at All Out or at all in sorry last year um i think he's gonna be a heat magnet like he has been so many other times chicago i think is just gonna be a little bit more intense a little bit different and that like i can't lie that kind of sparks in the back of my head like maybe they do it maybe those crazy guys maybe maybe tony twitter fingers goes nuts and says we got the nice moment with danielson but he really needs this neck surgery so you know what Jack Perry, you are a double champion in AEW, crowned in Chicago. You just retired one of, if not the most beloved and best wrestlers in the world, in the history of wrestling, in his generation, whatever you want to preface it with. Uh, that would be nuclear. I think that would be a huge, huge moment for Jack Perry. I don't think it's happening because I think 
there's probably like a handful at least of matches that Brian Danielson would like to have before he wrapped up his full time in ring career. So I'm expecting at least like three or four defenses. And I do think that there's a lot of um, like drama to be pulled from a feud with John Moxley. If that faction ends up fracturing into its own thing, going against the Blackpool combat club. Um, so I, I think there's just too much there unless Brian is really that seriously hurt. Uh, but I think this is going to be a really good match. I think Danielson will probably pull a lot out of Jack Perry. I think it's going to be a big, like, prove-it moment for Jack Perry as well. And I think Danielson retains. I, I think this is going to be the start of many title defenses for him. Um, and if not, if if the unthinkable happens and Jack Perry gets the win, then first and foremost, honestly, I just hope that Brian is okay and that uh, any issues related to the surgery that he needs are okay and not out of control and that, that everything is fine. That that honestly is my like number one thought and concern coming out of any Danielson match. Going into and coming out of any Danielson matches, I just hope he is okay and this is all he's just working us and, and putting on a show because God, every time that every time he grabs his head or like rolls around in pain or squirt like it's like ugh. It's he's too good at it. He's too good at it. And normally that would be the main event. That would be the last match of the night. Send everyone home happy with Brian Danielson holding the belt, getting the yes chance going. But no, we have got one more match, an unsanctioned lights out steel cage match between Swerve Strickland and Hangman Adam Page that I really don't know the depths that they're going to go to in this one. Uh, this week, Hangman Adam Page performed one of, if not the greatest, go-home show closing segment I think I have ever seen. This is up there for me with like when Stone Cold finally showed up after being at the bar the whole show, and he took out the entire WCW ECW alliance, and they're like JR's going crazy, like the crowd's going crazy, Austin's just hitting stunners and chair shots on everybody. Like this is up there because Hangman Adam Page does not come out for the contract signing. They say on Dynamite, the main event segment, we're going to have a contract signing. Everyone knows, okay, the fight's going to break out. Like, oh, well, no. Hangman Adam Page does not show up because he is at the house that AEW has just earlier that day released a video for showing Swerve Strickland and Prince Nana there where Swerve bought it his childhood home. He bought it back after years of work and hard work and struggle. And there, what a moment comes full circle. He bought his his childhood home back. It is back in his family. It was back in his family for all of seven hours because Hangman Adam Page went there, poured gasoline inside of and all around it, and burned that thing to the ground while sipping a whiskey and just sitting in front of the flames in like grandma's rocking chair. Like it was unbelievable. The promo he cut might have been the best promo of his entire run in AEW. It's unbelievable. It, it, these guys are just such wrestling soulmates in what they bring out of each other and how convincing they can be with one another. The, the way they play off of each other is so good. And it, it could have veered into corny because I think when the video came out, and you saw Swerve buying the house and everything, and they were talking about what a big moment it was. And, oh, wow, this is so nice. I think a lot of people were like, okay, so Hangman's going to do something to this house. Like, okay, something crazy is going to happen because they are really pushing this house right now on social media, on YouTube, everywhere. So something's got to be up. But they executed it flawlessly. And then after the show, Tony Khan comes out and adds these little details to make it that much better. He... He comes out and says, because of this, this is going to be a lights out, unsanctioned steel cage match. He says, I didn't know Hangman took his own camera crew to the house to film all this and to, to patch in, to show it. Um, and then the next day, Tony, on the I think the media call for All Out, says, yeah, I spent the entire night on the phone trying to keep Hangman out of jail. Sorry if I don't have the energy today. Like all these little flourishes and touches that could be so cheesy in other angles or with other people are just so compelling here. Like Swerve screaming at the screen, like, no, don't do like the, the pain and the hurt that he's so like, it was not corny for a second. 
And it's funny because I woke up Wednesday morning to the news that this was probably going to be the main event match, the steel cage match between these two. And I was like, oh man, that's interesting. I, I wonder what they're going to do tonight to like push it to that spot, to get it there, to the main event status. I would have never guessed, hey, Hangman Adam Page is going to burn down his house and then just like stare at him as he screams in the middle of the ring and it's going to be super uncomfortable. Uh, but they, they did it. These guys did it. Apparently it's been in the works for months and uh, they, they did not let anything get out. This was a very close to the vest plan spot and segment and it, it was unbelievable it worked out perfectly it also really kind of makes me nervous for whatever this match is going to be like are they going to light each other on fire are they going to like these matches between them have progressively gotten crazier and crazier we had swerve breaking into hangman's house obviously we had the blood drinking triple h spit spot the staples the cinder block i believe like there have been all sorts of unbelievable spots in these matches and i i really worry what they're gonna do to take this to the, ne the next level and swerved house getting burnt down like that specifically being the, the the thing that happened really makes me think that like someone might get lit on fire like hangman adam page might get lit on fire the crazy thing is talking about all of this i still haven't even mentioned that in ring when they perform together they're incredible their matches against each other are, are absolutely some of the top in the history of AEW. So not only are you getting this insanely compelling story, but you're getting probably two of the best, like, fit-together wrestlers on that roster. So I have unbelievably high expectations for what these guys are going to do and, and the levels and depths they're going to rise to and sink to to make this so different from those previous matches and so memorable. I, I really, I wonder, like... If this is going to become a this is the main event because the guys burned the ring and the cage to the ground trying to destroy each other. I don't think we've gotten to a point where the, this ends and they shake hands. Um, and then lastly, too, on top of all of this, everything I have mentioned, like, I think Hangman has never beat Swerve. Never in their feud. A Swerve has won every match. So add that wrinkle to it, too. Like, does Swerve, does Hangman finally win? With this, to, he had to <clears throat> sink to this level to finally get that win. And then the story is him either realizing it didn't solve anything, or who knows what direction they take it after that, or does Swerve win and it set Hangman off even more? Because, like, right now, I don't know how they're going to go past this match. Like, an unsanctioned, lights-out match in a steel cage after all of the escalation that has happened over the months and years of this feud, like... I can't see them doing another one after this. Like, that's like a, we need six months, let some time, and then we'll come back to it in an organic way with, like, the title involved or something else, but we'll come back to it. So I think this is going to be a definitive, uh, a definitive moment. My guess, I hate to say this because it just sounds awful, but my guess is I think Hangman Adam Page finally gets the win. AEW gets their monster heel and he does something despicable to Swerve, either lights him on fire or traps him in something with the illusion of lighting it on fire, and Swerve gets a much-deserved vacation after this run of matches and this championship reign and main eventing all in and all out. Uh, a very much-deserved, just resigned a new deal. Let that man get on a beach somewhere and enjoy some tropical drinks. Um, I think that th that's kind of the, the only thing I can see because like similar on the WWE side of things, CM Punk beat Drew McIntyre at Bash in Berlin in their strap match. And then the next night, Drew McIntyre came out and attacked him and escalated it even more. And I, I just, that being the logic here, I can't see Swerve getting the win. And in the storyline, Adam Page not coming out and attacking him the next Wednesday. Like, this isn't over yet because I haven't beat you. Like, it, it just feels like that would have to happen. And, and I think this story, for now, needs a definitive cap. So I'm going to say, I think Hangman Page gets the win. I think he does something truly despicable to Swerve and to Prince Nana. Get them both on the shelf. Get them both a break. Let Prince Nana sell some coffee and get in, get his entrepreneur on. Um, I, you know, it's tough to pick because it is so easy to picture either one. 
happening, but I think my, my heart of hearts tells me Hangman Adam Page gets the win. Like I said, AEW gets a monster heel. And then we find out what kind of direction they take this Hangman story next. Does, is he hollow after winning? Does he realize it doesn't you know fulfill that, that anger that he had? Um, I think it could be really compelling. I mean, he's the perfect wrestler to tell those types of stories. He's so good at those inner turmoil and angst type storylines. So there we have it. That is, that is AEW all out live from Chicago, Illinois this Saturday. I think it is going to be a great match. I apologize for how many times I probably said, Oh, you know, it's going to be a good match. Uh, one thing really quick before I get out of here that I do want to mention is one name that is not on this list of matches that is not on this card uh, is Ricochet. Ricochet signed. He was the big debut in the all-in casino gauntlet match. Uh, he had a great showing. He did not win, but he had a great showing. Followed up with a great dynamite debut versus Kyle Fletcher, where I think, honestly, Kyle Fletcher looked a little more dominant than I was expecting uh, against someone as, as, as well-established as Ricochet, who was coming in as like the big hot signing. And then now he, he just hasn't been there. He wasn't on dynamite this week. He's not on this card. Uh, yet I don't know this is Friday night I don't know if they'll add something Saturday morning but feels a little weird it, it feels like Ricochet is like I don't want to say slotted back into like his WWE role but in AEW but like he had a big showing in a gauntlet match in a, in a multi-man match he had a great singles match where he was probably challenged a bit more than he should have been in storyline and in stature and then he hasn't been seen since. And I just find it really interesting. I, I think it's weird that they wouldn't be using him while he's got this fresh buzz and, and at least getting him on the shows. So I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious to see what they have going on with it. But reading through all of this, he better be like the next Osprey challenger or he, he should have something lined up because I, I think it's a mistake to bring him in and make such a big deal about bringing him in and then not continue to capitalize on that right away. Like, he has not been on Dynamite, and he is not on this card, and it, it just feels to me like a mistake. But that's a, a conversation for another time. That is the AEW All Out card. Please, if you are seeing this or listening to this before the show, Saturday night, let me know what match you are most excited to see. If you were seeing this after, listening to this after, let me know what you thought. Did everything live up to your expectations? What was your most anticipated? And what was your favorite match of the night like let me know hit the comments i will put the email address in the description and show notes as always as well if you would prefer to send in your thoughts uh either way i appreciate and look forward to hearing from anyone and what they thought about this uh, if there's if there's time this weekend i'm going to try to hop back on to do a recap and reaction as well as the first half of this pod again covering the week in wwe and aew stories across their shows uh, but that might just have to wait for another week. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. But everyone, have a safe weekend. Enjoy All Out. And I'll see you next week.